What's up, everybody? It is me, King Alpha. Hope everybody is doing great. So, I obviously got you guys the Berserker Guide. So, there's a lot of things that are going to go into this that I'm going to be, you know, jumping between gameplay and then me talking and all that type of stuff. And I'm going to basically try and break down how the Berserkers work. I know some people say this unit sucks. Some people say this unit is amazing. Some people say it's overpowered, yada, yada, yada. Honestly, I think this unit is pretty balanced. Um... For what you're getting, for the leadership, for the amount of people in the unit and everything, it's a pretty balanced unit. But before we get into that, I just want to say um, thank you for everybody that did congratulate me on getting partnered. Um, if you don't know, I stream Monday through Friday on Twitch. So the Twitch uh, link is down in the description below. Um, but other than that, I'm going to be trying to post up guides. I'm going to do a unit tier list. I'm thinking I'm going to do a unit tier list before the shield maidens come out. And then I'll do another updated shield. Um, sorry, shield. <laughs> I'll do another updated tier list when the shield maidens do come out. So, yeah. If you guys do know, I do have uh, air matches behind me. So don't pay any mind to it. It's just, you know, I'm in New York for right now. Anyways. Let's talk about the Berserkers. So I know you guys are definitely wondering which line is the best line, what doctrines to use on these guys, all that type of stuff. Um, as you guys can see, I have my Berserkers fully decked out. I do have a temporary doctrine, but I'm going to take that off and obviously show you guys what else you can put there. Um, but let's get into the Venom C, all that type of stuff. So personally, I prefer top line. Top line Berserkers are absolutely insane. You know, more sustain, more health. Uh, in terms of damage output, it's a bit better than the bottom line. I've tested both lines. I've done the veteran C point change and I've went to bottom line with the same doctrines and everything. And definitely both of them are a different type of play style. However, I preferred the top line. So let's go over the top line and let me tell you guys why I enjoy the top line a little bit more than the bottom line and yada, yada, yada. So you get the increased slash damage here. That's fine. Increased slashing arm penetration is fine. He cannot be stunned by ordinary attacks while using ordinary attacks is very important. I think a lot of people don't understand that this means that when they're auto attacking and other people's units are auto attacking or heroes trying to auto attack these players or these berserkers, they cannot be stunned. Um, so this is it's really important that this is a skill that you get for your berserkers because they're going to be in a big mosh pit type of fight um then we got the health which is great we got the uh range resistance which is awesome you have the upon odin's uh charge a 10 percent damage re resist buff is applied for 10 seconds which is actually really important for them to actually tank damage um for the amount of units that you have with these guys then you also have increased slashing and um slashing arm penetration increased movement speed which is great and i'll tell you why um you have increased number of enemies each soldier can attack with by a single strike which is very important for any type of melee unit you always want the entire unit trying to attack as much as possible and with eight berserkers you definitely want all of them attacking and then when frenzy finishes this unit immediately will cover 2000 health now i know there was some people that were questioning well, like is this worth that you get the when frenzy finishes you get the immediate health re recover it is very important because each single unit that has taken damage or anything once frenzy finishes you're actually going to be able to recover 2000 health so you keep doing it and if you can keep making these guys survive you can actually have it where you don't have to always send these guys to the supply point i know i was getting so used to it where i use a melee unit and i always send them back to the supply point but then with these guys you really didn't need to so just wanted to keep that in mind that when frenzy finishes you will recover 2000 health and one of the big things that comes with this is the fact that when you go over to the frenzy skill and you read the skill it says using this skill restores 4500 health to each unit um well to each warrior in the unit when frenzy is uh, when frenzied the unit inflicts 50 percent more damage takes uh, takes 50 percent less damage and is immune to health control debuffs but cannot be given order this effect lasts for five seconds those five seconds actually are it, it feels like a lot five seconds in a big fight is crazy and i think what's something that's really cool is the rage that builds up so a lot of people don't know this but the rage builds up from what you do as well. If it's not only with your berserkers, I've done it where I'm on a Hawacha and my berserkers are on the stairs. They're not doing anything, but I'm killing units on the field and I'm actually building up rage for them. I don't know if this is a bug, but I 
hope it's not because it's actually pretty cool that you can actually build up your unit's rage while you're doing stuff or you're taking damage. I've done it before where I'm taking Namcan bleed and my berserkers are fine. They're not doing anything. But then because of the fact that I'm taking damage, they're getting rage. So I hope this isn't a type of bug or anything. And I definitely think it makes the unit a bit better compared to having to constantly build up their rage as well. Sometimes when they're about to get into a fight and they see the enemy, they start to get a little bit enraged as well. So definitely want to keep that in mind that building up rage for berserkers it mixes all around um next you have battle madness battle madness is really important because you can uh, this is another way to actually get your unit to actually get stacks of um basically health recovery which is really great um you get damage buffs and everything uh it lasts for 4.5 seconds and this can stack up to 10 times upon 10 stacks berserkers recover hp now in terms of battle madness which is great you can use the berserker assault which will actually they do like a little quick swipe in the video and then you'll see that they also get four stacks of battle madness one thing i will say about berserker assault you don't always want to use this skill immediately um however you want to use it in a bit of situational so if it's against shields you use this if it's against like a big blob of units you use this i typically don't always use this because of the fact that like i want my unit to get frenzy as soon as possible because um when using this skill it actually takes a small amount of rage which you don't really want to constantly use this skill every two seconds the cooldown on this skill is ridiculous it's like literally four or five seconds um, so you don't want to always just use Berserker Assault every single time that you're accumulating a small amount of rage because you want them to actually get frenzy so you can get that health recovery, damage, um, more damage and damage reduction, all that type of stuff. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Berserker, uh, the Odin's Charge. It does give them a small amount of rage as well. One big reason I don't go the bottom line is because of the fact that bottom line is basically all output damage and you do get rage a lot more however it doesn't feel like you have that type of sustain with these guys if you look at the stats over here i'm not going to go too much into the lower stats over here but the upper stats they almost have a speed of six which is almost as fast as the sons of fenrir which is crazy um but their health is almost at twenty thousand. i am using a doctrine right now that i would swap out for the other doctrine so i could have twenty thousand health i mean nineteen thousand five hundred something health um so definitely keep that in mind there is a doctrine we're going to talk about the doctrines in a little bit but for 235 leadership eight on eight strength and almost twenty thousand health you want these guys to stay as tanky as possible when you go bottom line you actually only get you actually lose two thousand health and it, it hurts it hurts a lot because each and single berserker you want them to be as tanky as possible. You want these guys to last. And if you guys don't know as well, let's say you lose five of your berserkers, you're three out of eight. You can actually still use those three out of eight berserkers. Um, let's say you want to swap to another unit. You can still use those berserkers. It's after you get to two out of eight that you can't use the berserkers anymore. Um, if you guys don't know about like the percentages in terms of how much percent of the unit that you lose, you can actually still use these berserkers when you're actually three out of eight instead of... Um, you know when you're six out of eight or all that type of stuff you just can't use it if you have two berserkers left so you might as well just chuck them so that's uh one of the big things i wanted to talk about so let's go into the doctrine so these guys they actually classify as a total different unit type class so they're not considered sword and shield they're not considered obviously uh no they're just considered a whole different type of class which i hope in the future they do allow for more doctrines to actually go with these guys so that you can actually use it use them in and put different doctrines on them it kind of sucks that you couldn't put sword doctrines on them even though they do slashing arm penetration they actually have a slashing doctrine as well and all that type of stuff um anyways let's get into the actual doctrines that you want to put you're very limited on doctrines you can put um the temporary doctrine i have right here it's really great but i would typically have this as my full setup so this is the berserker doctrine you definitely want to get this this is amazing increase health by 360 and then reduces the range damage taken by 50 then you get the assassination and breakthrough doctrines which are great sprint doctrine the epic mobility uh, epic mobility doctrine is one of the most important doctrines for these guys because you can actually use sprint while they're charging so they're charging at a faster speed they you know even when you're using sprint when they're fighting they're moving a bit faster for 50 this movement speed increased by 15 percent for eight seconds 
very important for these guys. Um, I know most people sometimes put these on their cav, but I would really suggest if you're using berserkers, you definitely want to put these guys like this doctrine on these guys. Um, I love this doctrine. It makes my berserkers a lot faster and I actually enjoy, you know, constantly using sprint and it, it's only on, it's a, like a 20 second cooldown for using sprint. So you can get it a lot, um, by the time your charges. Now I know when you go bottom line on the, uh, berserkers, you do get a lot of cooldown reductions on Odin's charge. However, top line, you only get 35 second cooldown. Like I said, you have the sprint, so you use charge and then sprint and then your sprints on 20 second cooldown your berserks are on 35 second cooldown um as well if i was to actually and i should have kept that to show you guys if i was to actually put that health doctrine on they're almost at 9 19,500 health which is amazing um just definitely keep in mind after this season is done these guys will go to 245 leadership and i think these guys are personally worth the 245 leadership um because they're just such a great unit they're very tanky when they go into frenzy they do a lot of damage um and i think i think they're one of those like wall wall people if anything like instead of using iron reapers you should use berserkers if you instead of using Siladars, you should use berserkers uh, because they definitely do a lot of damage and they're really nice um we're gonna get into the gameplay so i will talk to you guys in there and i'll talk to you guys about strategies what unit this unit is good against what unit this unit isn't good against um and all those type of things so i'll catch you guys in a minute let's get into the gameplay all right everybody let's get into the gameplay so i know some people have been asking they want to see a little bit more gameplay so i put in a little bit of extra here uh regardless what i want to talk about is what you like what heroes work best with this unit so these guys are one of those all in they're berserkers what hero classes do you want to use with these units that these units actually are very cohesive with basically that they work really well with and i can name the top three best classes so definitely use these guys with for one you definitely want to use these guys with the mall downright one of the best classes to use is with the mall uh number two you definitely want to use these guys with short swords short swords could definitely open up a lot when it comes to berserkers um and then number three is glaive glaive is one of the best openers as well with flying reaper and you could do heat of battle it all works out really freaking well um one big thing i want to say that these guys will struggle against any type of pole arm units pike units all that type of stuff these guys don't have the best piercing or are basically piercing defense so these guys will struggle against a lot of four to i do show right here that even though we're in a massive big blob there's other units and stuff they're in frenzy and all that for the Brachio, when they V, they will destroy Berserkers. It's just how it is. Even Pike Militia do pretty good against Berserkers. And it kind of sucks because you want these guys to actually, you know, go all out on these Forte Brachio. However, Forte Brachio and like Imperial Pikes and all that type of stuff are really good. One of the other great things is that even though they don't have the best um piercing defense they are very good against imperial pikes however when i say they're good against imperial pikes i mean that the unit is good against imperial pikes in terms of when you have frenzy uh one thing that i said in the video is that they're immune to crowd control now when they're immune to crowd control you actually need to make sure that the unit itself um as frenzy in order to, for you to avoid their imperial pike walk a lot of people don't know this but basically when the imperials are walking over your berserkers if you have frenzy you can actually make sure that these guys get right back up and they start murdering the entire and like the entire imperial pike um which is is amazing because typically imperial pikes counter all infantry all that type of stuff which you don't want obviously and it's just one of the big things to add because a lot of people don't know this. Um, another big thing as well, I will say is you want to definitely watch your engagements with these units. These guys, by far, they cannot be one of those units that are frontline. They need to be behind another unit. They need to actually secure um, enough time to get their rage, all that type of stuff. That's one big thing I want people to really realize. You cannot go and just chuck these guys into the front line thinking that they're going to be able to tank all the damage and all that type of stuff. It is definitely not going to happen in terms of the fact that this unit cannot tank other units if they are the front line. They definitely need that type of back line or another person in the front line with 
like either, either paladins or other type of units. Um, two berserker units here, for example, they definitely did uh, are gonna they're gonna do some work, but still this unit does need support it can't be just one of those units like iron reapers where you could yeet into a or like a, a shield wall formation unless you're going to be breaking that whole entire thing open so i definitely want people to you know get into the idea that these guys are not going to be frontline as you can see i do make the mistake here and i basically lose all of my guys because of the fact that they uh had to tank this entire damage which you know kind of sucks but it's a lot of damage and sometimes you need to actually use these guys to break things open um one thing i want to say as well is when you're using these guys make sure that you use the two skill whenever is needed like i said the two skill is very um time based so if you see that you're going to be able to gain a lot of rage definitely use the skill whenever you need to create an opening for them um and definitely make sure that you are always supporting these guys these guys do need support you should not ever chuck these guys into a big fight i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys think um i think i the berserkers are one of my favorite units in the game right now i'm playing every single game without them i mean with them sorry and they're just they're one of my favorite units i'm really excited for the shield maidens hopefully can uh can use the shield maidens and these guys together in order to actually you know crush online siege and even in ranked maybe so i'll see you guys deuces have a great one